I was going to be your friend. No! I'm <laughs> <laughs> great. Hairline mildly less receding. And even more knowledge. Um, and a dream. Brilliant. And it's not dream via German or any bollocks like that. No. A loyalist. God, this is going to be fun. I'll leave the stage now and let you do your work. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll just join the radiance. So much, Ivo. I think I'll give you your mic stand. Where you, you can you can play with that. <laughs> so, hi, Bright Club. Anybody ever been bitten by a spider? Yeah. No. Yes. Oh, yes. Did it work? <laughs> Did you acquire a superpower? No. Spider bites are basically rubbish. They really don't fulfill the dream. They swell up a little bit, and the next morning you still can't shoot the webs out of your wrists. You know what I mean? Right. Anyway, let me start from the start. I got my PhD one time. I came up to Oxford. <laughs> Thought I'd come to Oxford looking for a job. Didn't realize there was another university in town, so went into Oxford Brooks. <laughs> The nice lady at the reception counter gave me a job application form, so I had to fill that out. Put my name at the top. Dr. John Runyons, mild-mannered scientist. <laughs> I had to list my skills on this form, so I said, well, I tinker with genes. I do genetic modification. Down near the bottom of the form, I had to tick a box for my nationality. Let me see, British? No, no. Where am I? Oh, here I am, here. Tick. Bloody foreigner coming to take all of our jobs. That's the fuck you UK option. Sorry. Sorry. I gotta apologize for that last bit. I really must learn to adopt the mannerisms of my new culture. That was actually the up yours Nigel option. Anyway, the upshot of all of this was that it worked. Oxford Brooks gave me a job, they gave me a lab, and they said, okay, go out there and do good science things. So now, the first thing that a new scientist needs to do is to get some funding from somewhere. So what you do is you send off a funding application to the government. And I did this. And on this funding application form, you have to list two things. You have to say what your research is going to be, and you have to say how society is going to benefit from that research. So, my research, I told you I tinker with genes. I can take a gene, for example, from a jellyfish. And this gene is called green fluorescent protein. And I can put this gene into other living animals and plants. And the amazing thing is that when I fire one of my lasers at one of these transformed animals and plants, they glow green and fluorescently. It's absolutely incredible what science can do. So, that's just a tool. That's just something that helps me work towards transforming animals and plants so that I can do better things like, oh, I don't know, maybe cure cancer or, or solve the world food crisis. That's what I said I was going to do on the forum. I said, I'm going to genetically modify plants. I'm going to make them more nutritious. I'm going to feed the world. Yeah. I felt really smug when I sent this application form in. I thought, wow, I, I, I just, I, the, the money's going to arrive any day. Uh, I just sat in my office while I waited, doing the other rather more mundane things that academics do. Twitter and Facebook, and things like that. Um, just, just waiting for the big bag of funding to arrive. And then my dream died. Yeah, I know. Do you guys read the Daily Mail? <laughs> no? Come on. Especially the sidebar. Yeah, I know. I got news for you guys. Not all of the headlines in the Daily Mail are 100% accurate. <laughs> They're open to interpretation, let's say, depending on a person's needs. So, let me illustrate my point with a recent headline from the Daily Mail. Woman's idea of the perfect man. He's six feet tall, he earns 48,000 a year, he drives an Audi, he eats meat, and he drinks beer. Pretty hot, ladies, <laughs> huh? Okay, right, but your average shorter and stature bloke reads the same headline. This guy earns 20,000 a year, drives a white van. He says, what a load of utter rubbish. Okay, so headlines in the Daily Mail are open to interpretation. It depends who you are and how they suit your needs. Unless 
The headline mentions genetic modification. Then it's unanimous. Hang on a minute, Frankenfood. This must be true. There's an immediate outcry. Let me illustrate with another headline from the Daily Mail. Scientists insert foreign gene into crop plants making your food toxic. <laughs> oh, jeez. Foreign genes, eh? I, I just picture all the other genes saying, bloody foreign genes coming to steal all our jobs. Anyway, the outcry from a headline like this is immediate and huge. Overnight, a group called People Against Poison and Our Food comes up. Their mantra is, bloody scientists spending all of our hard-earned tax money putting poison into our food. And you know the upshot of it all? It means that research like mine becomes immediately unfundable overnight. So there I am. I'm a new scientist with a new empty lab, and I've got no source of research funding. What was I going to do? I hit on the only sensible alternative. I decided that I needed to become an evil super <laughs> genius. <laughs> so, what do you need if you're going to be an evil super genius bent on total world domination? You need, let's say, a costume? <laughs> Perhaps a sidekick? I don't know, a lair? Oh, no, no! The most important thing if you're going to be an evil super genius is to have a superpower. So, have you guys looked at the catalog of superpowers that are out there? There are thousands of them, but all the good ones are taken. There's nothing left for me. Um, there's only like some rubbish, really niche -y kind of superpowers left. Let me see if I can think of an example. I don't know. Maybe... Flexi Girl! It's not, it's not what it sounds, guys. Um, Flexi Girl's superpower is that she can fold a map back the way it started every single time. She'd have to be a girl, because the bloke would have never opened a map in the first place. <laughs> so what was going to be my superpower? I thought about this. I thought I could genetically modify myself, couldn't I? I would be green and glowing, but then I thought, does the world really need another green and glowing superhero? Probably not. I'm not being racist. I'm just saying. And then, I, it, then it hit me. Eureka! I already know how to genetically modify animals. What I'll do is I'll make an army of glowing green mutant rabbits. Yeah. I'll be their commander. Genetic modification man. GM man, for short. How's that sound? So, rabbits, I hear you say. An army of rabbits. Why have you chosen rabbits? Well, rabbits, I'll admit, are sort of cuddly and cute, but also they're a little bit scary. I don't know if you know what I mean. The way they winkle their noses at you and stare. I find it a little bit eerie. I sort of picture a scenario like a, a slightly more sinister version sequel of Watership Down. Watership Down 2, Rise of the Bunnies. Anyway, anyway, how much was all of this going to cost me? You guys been keeping up with Tony Stark's? Exploits? Tony Stark? Yeah. Iron Man? Yeah. Somebody's calculated that Tony Stark has spent $500 million, and that's just on his costume. If you taught up the house and the car and the tech and the weapons and all of that, it comes to more like $1.6 There was no way I was going to get that kind of funding. <laughs> <laughs> it would help, of course, to be independently wealthy. All of the best superheroes in the cartoons are independently wealthy because they've inherited their money from their dead parents. My mother and father refuse to support me in this. <laughs> Totally 
balls, crack myself right up. Anyway, how was I going to get the funding to support this? The only sensible thing that I could think of in this situation was that I send another funding application into the government. And again, on this application form, I had to say how society was going to benefit from me, GM man, with my army of evil, green, green glowing mutant rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> I had to lie my ass off. They said they'd be a big hit on BBC Spring Watch. They'd be able to film at night time. Anyway, <laughs> I sat around waiting for the funding to arrive, but sure enough, the news came in. Dear GM man, <laughs> While we agree in principle that your army of glowing green mutant rabbits is feasible, we fail to see how it's going to help you achieve total world domination. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. So now, I'm a budding super evil genius on a shoestring budget. <laughs> Which goes a good way towards explaining why I've ripped off the General Motors logo for my costume. <laughs> Just let him come after me for the copyright violation. I'll stick my mutant bunny on them. That's right, you heard correctly, bunny, singular. I've only made one rabbit so far. <laughs> but when I make a second rabbit, you people will rue the day. You know what rabbits are like when they get together. And once I've got my army of glowing green mutant rabbits, there's only one more thing that I'm going to need to be living the true evil super genius dream. That's a sidekick. So I just happened to have the sidekick application form here if anybody's interested. In lieu of pay, I promise a costume just slightly less sexy than this one. <laughs> Remember, when you come to the part on the forum about how society is going to benefit from you being GM man's sidekick, lie your ass off. I don't want to spend the rest of my life clean cleaning green glowing poop out of those rabbit hutches on my own.